All right, man. So today I'm gonna react to the, um, the top ten reactions of innocent people being set free. Yeah, I already know, man. It, it's a lot of that going on. The police always seem to find one person to blame something on when they can't find a real person. So we know how it's go. You know, we know how they go. You know, but I ain't gonna waste no time, man. I'm get get right into it. Set my screen recorder. Three, two, one. Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top Ten Archive. It's everyone's worst nightmare. Being locked up for a crime they didn't commit. Imagine spending years behind bars knowing that you're completely innocent of the heinous crime you've been accused of. But nobody listens to your pleas. These ten people know that feeling all too well. And when they finally do prove their innocence, their reactions are nothing short of heart-wrenching. But before we get started, why not become an archivist today by clicking that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. If you end up enjoying this video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up. And in the comments section, tell us how you think innocent people who serve time should be compensated. Number 10. Eight Years for Murder Devante Sanford was just 15 years old when he was locked up for the murder of four people. While he was still 14, he was arrested for a slave at a Detroit drug den and was allegedly coerced into making his confession. Despite being blind in one eye, barely able to read or write, and wow. making numerous attempts to yeah, recant his how. confession, Sanford see was how. shown no leniency and was up. jailed for a minimum of 39 years. He was finally freed when a professional hitman came forward and confessed to the four killings. He finally told the truth while already serving 52 years in prison for eight other killings, and he told detectives that he would never have taken on someone like Sanford as a sidekick. Police working the original case were accused of flawed work that led to the conviction of the teenager. Crazy. Sanford walked out of prison with his brother and can be seen smiling quietly to himself as he finally gets to make his long-awaited journey back home. He later spoke to the press, telling them that he never doubted that one day he'd be a free man. Like, the hard part is over, you know? Like, the hardest part was getting me out of prison, you know? So, I think I'll be, I'll be ready for it. Number nine, nine years for murder. This 16-year-old was jailed for 38 years after being coerced into making a false confession. Bobby Johnson ended up pleading guilty to murder, but it was shown that his IQ was below the mental impairment line during his trial. In 2006, Johnson was arrested for the shooting of a 70-year-old man during an apparent robbery in New Haven. His defense attorney had spent years trying to free Johnson, stating that there was lots of evidence available before he was arrested, but that it was ignored. He also told reporters that Johnson broke down crying during police questioning, and that the teenage boy was promised probation if he confessed. Clearly overwhelmed by his release, Johnson says he's going to look for a job, but will first focus on spending time with his family after being kept away from them for so long. Yeah, that's oh, crazy. Man. It's beautiful. Number eight, 16 years for rape. Lewis Vargas was jailed for rape that he didn't commit after DNA evidence linked him to the 1998 case. Vargas of California was mistakenly found guilty of a crime that was actually committed by an unidentified attacker known as the teardrop rapist. The unidentified assailant sexually assaulted 35 women including minors in L.A. between 1996 and 2012. His moniker came from the witness accounts that he had a teardrop tattoo under his eye. In 1999, Vargas was sentenced to 55 years in prison for three counts of sexual assault. All three victims identified Vargas as the attacker because he had the same teardrop tattoo. But despite his conviction, he always maintained his innocence throughout his time locked up. After appeals resulted in no success, Vargas contacted the California Innocence Project, who retested the original DNA and found that it didn't match him. Vargas was eventually released in 2015 after serving 16 years as an entirely innocent man, and his reaction was nothing short of a huge relief. 
His daughter's reaction was equally heartbreaking, and she was so confident in her father's innocence that she waited to get married until his release. My mom, when you see me, I am outside. Please buy me, buy me a big hamburger and we eat it together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Number seven, 17 years for murder. Mm. Susan Mellon, the only woman on this list, was freed from prison in 2014 after serving 17 years for a murder she never committed. Mellon, of Los Angeles, had been sentenced to life without the possibility of parole for the killing of transient Richard Daly in 1997. She was convicted solely on the testimony of an alleged witness, but Mellon's defense team argued repeatedly that there were many inconsistencies with the statement that was made. Mellon had three children at the time of her arrest, and the eldest was left to raise her younger siblings while fighting to get her mom out of prison. Mellon was full of forgiveness and hope when she gave an interview to the press just after her release. She was clearly overwhelmed by her freedom, but she told the crowd that she never lost hope that one day she'd be freed. Three gang members were eventually linked to the crime, and one of them was convicted of the killing. On one day, God would bring the truth to light. I always knew that um, I would crazy get my that is justice, heavy. and I would be, um, he, God would reverse my destiny, and that I'm not, I'm not to do a death sentence. I'm to come home and be with my family. And be with oh, my grandson! <laughs> Number six, 18 years for rape and murder. Stephen Avery is perhaps the most famous case of an innocent man being released from prison. In 1985, he was sentenced to 32 years behind bars for the rape and attempted murder of a female jogger. He served 18 years until, in 2003, new DNA testing proved that Avery was innocent of the crime. He was finally released, much to the joy of his mom. Avery was 43 when he finally won his freedom, but by that time, his wife had divorced him, and the newborn twin sons that he had had just before his arrest were grown. Avery was clearly overjoyed to be free, but made it clear that he feels no anger towards the woman who wrongly accused him. Mm. His focus is clearly on enjoying a second chance at life, and his press interview proves that forgiveness is possible in even the most devastating of circumstances. As fans of the Netflix series Making a Murderer may know, this wasn't the end of Avery's story and he's currently behind bars for the alleged murder of another woman just two years after his release. Continue on your brother. Better than the People make mistakes. You know, can't blame them. Had enough time to think about it. Number five, East Cleveland Three freed after 20 years. Wow. Eugene 20. Johnson, Derek Wheat, and Larice Glover, otherwise known as the East Cleveland Three, were finally set free in 2015 after spending 20 years behind bars for a murder none of them committed. The three men were locked up for shooting another teenager to death in 1995, but finally the truth would come out. Two leading officers were found to have violated the civil rights of the men when it came to light that they had withheld police reports containing favorable witness statements. They'd also been found to have coerced a 14-year-old witness into implicating the men. The witness later recanted their statement, and the men's lawyers also found that evidence that someone else was the shooter was kept out of court. After 20 years, the men were finally granted their freedom by a judge who had been following their case since the beginning of her career. The men cried tears of relief after living a nightmare for so long and their families celebrated in court and gave emotional interviews to the press. Each man has been awarded $5 million in compensation, but That's I doubt good. that'll make up for the loss of their youth that and their liberty right. at the hands of crooked cops. That's crazy, man. And see, and see, this, this the whole, like, this, like, this right here clearly relates to what's going on now, you know what I'm saying? With all these crooked cops, man, like, you know, it's 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 just it's just no justifying that. You know, we got all these crooked ass cops out here, man. You know, look at what happened to George Floyd. Shit, crazy, bro. Shit, really crazy, bro. You know, but hey, man. This right here, just this one right here, just this one right here, just touched me though. 
they, these boys spent 20 years in the pen, man. And then they finally, finally freed these men. Crazy. Act innocent project. This guy right here, because they believed in us, and this has been a long road. Number four, 21 years for murder. Hmm. In 1967, James Joseph Richardson was wrongly convicted of killing his seven children by poisoning. The crime, which happened in Florida, shocked the entire country, and Richardson, a migrant farm worker, was immediately the prime suspect. Instead of being able to mourn the deaths of his beloved children, Richardson was found guilty by an all-white jury and wrongly locked up for their killings. Hmm. Sentenced to death, Richardson spent five years on death row until 1972, when Florida's laws changed and the sentence was commuted to life in prison. Richardson was due to be up for parole in 1993, but in 1989, new evidence came to light which cleared him of any wrongdoing. He was immediately released and awarded $1.2 million for the loss of 21 years of his life. It was actually a neighbor. Bessie Reese that allegedly killed the children after she was left in charge of feeding them lunch on that fateful day. Wow. It was finally revealed that at the time of the killings, Reese was on parole for killing her ex-husband with poison. Marvelous. What? I can be able to go where I want to go. Number three, 29 years for rape and kidnapping. After serving almost three decades in prison for a crime that he didn't commit, Raymond Towler finally walked free in 2010. In May 1981, an 11-year-old girl and her cousin were walking when they were lured to a wooded area by a man claiming there was an injured deer that needed their help. When the two children followed him, the man pulled out a gun and assaulted the boy before raping the young girl. Towler was stopped for running a stop sign a few weeks later and the police officer noticed that he resembled the composite sketch of the rapist. The victims and other witnesses identified Towler from a photo lineup, and despite having an alibi, he was sent to prison for life. Hmm. As the judge fought back tears, and Towler's representatives did the same, the man himself simply said, wow, before giving a heartwarmingly hey, positive hey, interview. Hmm. This man has been 30 years in prison, man. For something he did not fucking do. Like, his Number whole two, life. 36 like, years for murder. Damn. Michael Hanline was locked up in 1978 and was finally released after That's 36 sad, years in November 2014. He was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole after wrongly being found guilty of first-degree murder. In November 1978, a biker by the name of J.T. McGarry disappeared from his California home before being found shot dead a few days later. Handline was arrested for the killing, but it was discovered that his case had been grossly unfair. A defense attorney that represented many of the prosecution's witnesses had threatened them into testifying against Handline, and one even falsely placed him in J.T.'s home on the night of the murder. Handline's first steps in freedom wonderful to watch and he's clearly overwhelmed by finally being outside his first stop the burger that he'd seen in the commercials of course <laughs> a half pound bacon I burger from carl's jr oh, my, my. it's kind of hard this feels like i'm on the front of a, a rocket ship going through you know, <laughs> space yeah just <laughs> uncharted territory yeah just an incredible rush doesn't seem, I guess, actually real yet. Number one, released after serving 39 years Ooh. for murder. Ricky Jackson was freed after serving a grueling 39 years for a murder he didn't commit. In May 1975, a businessman was murdered outside a grocery store where he was delivering money orders. Two black men were reported to have beat the man and thrown acid in his face before shooting him dead. The case against Jackson and two other men was built around the testimony of a 12-year-old boy who said he saw the men commit the crime. Jackson had never been in trouble with the law before, but that didn't matter to the courts, and in 1997, he was sentenced to death for the murder he didn't commit. That charge was later commuted to life imprisonment, 
and after the only witness to the crime finally came forward and admitted he was lying about what he saw, Jackson's conviction was finally overturned in 2014. Mm. Jackson's quiet relief as he's freed is beautiful to watch, and his following interview is full of hope. He's even forgiving of the person whose testimony sent him to prison in the first place, speaking of the courage it took for them to come forward and tell the truth. Some of that stuff, man. Some of that stuff is just crazy, you know, how people get people get treated, you know, for something they didn't do. You know, and I know this is a long video, but man. That last one though, 39 years of his life was took. I, I don't I don't know, you know. But hey, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe, man. Go and join the family, man. You know, I'm gonna keep kicking these videos out, man. For y'all, man. Um, let me get up out of here. That was that was crazy. That was crazy. Peace.